Hi, this is another episode of the Great Johannes Podcast. I haven't done one in a while. I was busy. But Brussels wants to offer Britain an immigration deal so they can send their young to Europe for work or study. Ah, I know what they really mean. They want to turn Europe into yet another dumping ground for their unwanted young immigrants. But in the meantime, in this strange dystopian world, something interesting is brewing. Here you have the, a black minister from the UK, Kemi Badenoch. She has a British last name, so I suppose. The point is, what she has to say is so incredibly true that I deserve to talk about it. Basically, she's saying everything I've been saying on my TikTok for the past two years, namely that the West did not steal the wealth from the Africans because wealth is generated by mixing labor with resources. Owning the resources six feet under in your soil is not enough to be wealthy. You have to dig it out, know what to do with it. I mean, it wasn't all gold and diamonds. It was cobalt and iron. <laughs> and you need to turn that into something people want to have. Equipment, tools, apparatuses, applications, appliances, machines, and so on and so forth. And this woman, of course, she is a puppet. She's a, a black puppet working for the British government, for the elites. But it shows, it's telling that the British elites, who are obviously pale-skinned, damn well know what is really going on here. It would be wrong to attribute the UK's wealth and economic success to its colonial history or racial privilege. The business and trade minister, Kemi Badenoch, has told an audience in the city, in London, the financial capital, Addressing financial services bosses at the City UK's International Conference in London, the business secretary said the UK's past exploitation and oppression of other countries and groups of people could not sufficiently explain the country's economic trajectory. No, of course not. Badenoch said, It worries me when I hear people talk about wealth and success in the UK as being down to colonialism or imperialism or white privilege or whatever. Like I said, she's a black woman saying this because she's a paid puppet. doesn't matter. Her elites, her owners, basically, do understand what's going on. Namely, she said that the glorious revolution of 1688, which led to the development of the UK Constitution and solidified the role of Parliament, should be credited for providing the kind of economic certainty that paved the way for the Industrial Revolution. Economic certainty, indeed, which goes hand in hand with... Uh, private property, by the way, because when you have the right to own private property, your own land, your own house, your own machinery, your own factories, and so on, if you're allowed to own your tools, then you will invest in those things and you will want to make sure that you will keep making more money off of it so you can grow your own family, you know, expand your, your household and so on and so forth, go on holidays or buy luxury goods or whatever it is that you're after. But Private property and the economic certainty provided by a state that allows you to have private, private property combined gives you the opportunity to think further ahead. You know, in many places in Central Africa or in Sub-Saharan Africa, there's no point in investing in anything because it will be stolen the next day. You know, you can own a plot of land in certain areas of Africa, but you can't grow anything on it. People just steal the food. You need to have a protective mechanism here that if you want to be a successful farmer, such as in Europe, that your farm can't be robbed. You need to have a legal system that says that indeed people who steal your food and your equipment, your tools will be punished for that. And so it will be disincentivized to steal from farmers. But without that, you wouldn't do that. And this is the problem in many places in Africa. There's a reason why Africans don't have their own industry industry because they never had their own industrial revolution and they never had their own re industrial revolution because why why bother investing anything in anything if you have a culture of theft and thievery and robbing i mean they call us the thieves the thieves right which is projection by the way they say that we were the thieves and we stole the wealth from the africans but the africans didn't have any wealth they hadn't even begun looking for the resources buried in their soil and even if they had they wouldn't know what to do with it because they didn't, didn't invent anything. They didn't have any need or purpose for these resources until the Europeans showed them what they could do with them. But then, of course, they were only interested in the results, in the wealth produced in the factories of the European Industrial Revolution. 
whenever an African says that we stole their wealth, you can always counter it by saying, well, excuse me, we, our people, were working in the factories of an industrial age. We spent several centuries working 80, 90, 100 hours a week or more producing the wealth that later flowed back to Africa anyway in the form of development aid. So it's completely unfair. You know, the wealth that the Western factories freely donated to the Africans in return for their resources is so abundantly large. Um, the African population was able to grow from about 85 million people in the year 1800 to 1 1.3 billion people in the year uh, 2020. I can't even do the math. That's like a 13 fold increase or so. If you go a bit further back to the 1600s, it's practically a, a 20 fold increase since since the beginning of colonialism. Uh, same in India. The Indians claim that the British extracted trillions and trillions of pounds or dollars worth of uh, merch from from the Indian continent. That isn't true. Uh, during all this period, the Indian population grew from small numbers to the 1.2 billion they have today. That didn't happen because the British extracted wealth. The British also introduced economic certainty to India, which they did not have before. They could not produce on their own. Keep that in mind, yeah? Western people didn't just export colonialism and theft and robbery. No, 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 no. We brought them the systems, the legal frameworks, the democratic political systems required to be able to have long-term views and to bring economic certainty to a certain area so that it could be economically developed in the first place. When we speak of the developing nations of the developing world, we don't say third world anymore, but the, the developing world, right? It's because Western white people introduced there the, the, the frameworks, the legal and, and financial frameworks that allowed development to begin in the first place. They should thank us for it, right? I'm quoting again. So any other interpretation could derail efforts to increase growth at home and abroad, Dardanok said. It matters because if people genuinely believe that the UK only grew and developed into an advanced economy because of exploitation and oppression, then the solutions they will devise will make our growth and productivity problem even worse. So yeah, I get it, because if you have too many people coming to Britain, to the West, mass immigration, and all these people just want the wealth and the money, but they're not willing to work the factories, as our ancestors did during the Industrial Age and are still doing, by the way. I mean, we, we put our people in factories and offices to be economically productive for the machinery. And if you have too many millions of immigrants coming to the Western world who don't want to work, but they just want to have the wealth and they come to steal it here, meaning they come to steal the productive output of our economic system, right? Then you disincentivize work. It means we're going back to the, to the time before there was economic certainty. Now, I do disagree with our ruling elites in the West on this one matter. I don't believe it is our job to try to hold on to the industrial age as though we should continue being industriously productive. Um, to me, industrialism and urbanism go hand in hand, and both of them are things that I think we are ready to step away from. Thinking of it this way, for the past three or four hundred years, our people, the white people of Northwestern Europe, have been trapped in the factories and in the offices, uh, serving the interests of the industrial age and, of course, the economic elite class that arose from it. And we're done. That's my point. We're done doing the work. We don't want to work and spend 90% of our economic, our personal economic output on others so they can be enriched or be fed as in the third world, right? Through development aid. We don't want to do this anymore. We don't want, we don't want to pay taxes to fund the Islamization of our own continent, for example. A lot of our economic output is being used and abused by people who couldn't care less about the very people generating this wealth. I know this is sort of a Marxist leftist argument, right? But I see it from a right wing perspective in the sense that this is our opportunity to break away, to cut loose from this stupid economic system and the, liber and the liberalism that it gave birth to, you know, and we can go back to living in a more spiritual manner, closer to nature, more infused with God, more spiritually in tune with God, right? And away from the machinations of, of urban big industry and the elites there. Right. So it is interesting, though, that our elites, our ruling elites, do seem to understand perfectly well, as I said, uh, what is really going on here. And they can't use mass millions of immigrants who have no intention of doing any work in the factories. It means that their power base, their financial power base, is actually being successfully undermined by immigration. But it comes at the expense is that our own people here uh, won't have any way to live or feed themselves anymore. Um, in my visions, in my view, 
I see that we should join the farmers because for some reason farmers in the West are being expelled for off their land. Like in the Netherlands, the Netherlands wants to actively remove their farmers. And at the same time, uh, some Dutch company bought like a quarter million hectares of land in Ukraine because of the war. Land is cheap, right? And so whatever the purpose is, our farmers will have to move further east. I, I recommend they go northeast like Poland, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. So once the war with Russia is over, hopefully our farmers will be, will be able to move there. And a lot of our people, millions of our people might follow them there. And we could start new colonies of Germanic types peoples there or Anglo people, Saxon people, whatever, right? Uh, the idea is that uh, we need farmers to live and we need land for farmers. So Northwest Eurasia, which includes Finland, Scandinavia, also uh, Northwestern Russia. It, these are massive woodlands that you can turn into farmland by clearing the forests. Uh, the land is extremely fertile and you can start using it for pastoralism. The only thing we have to deal with is the cold and the winter and the snow and so on. But I suppose you can still raise cattle quite far north with modern techniques, right? Uh, and that's, so that's what, what we'll just have to do. We'll just have to accept, that is my view, that I think the liberal left-wing types of people, they are so intertwined with materialism, their souls are so empty, they will stay in the cities and they will work the factories or they will have immigrants work their factories for them, right? Slavery. Uh, but the stronger types, the right wing types who have had enough of this, uh, who, 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 sorry, who have had enough of this, who just want to breathe fresh air again and drink fresh water again, you know, maybe we can do it. Maybe it is feasible for us to cut loose from this nonsense and just get away from it. I mean, why stay in the big cities in the West anyway, like London, Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Utrecht, Rotterdam, these places are infested with Islam and Africans now. Why would you want to stay there? I certainly wouldn't want to stay there. So it matters in other countries too. She, I'm quoting again, because if developing nations do not understand how the West became rich, they cannot follow in its footsteps. Exactly. We became rich because we kickstarted the industrial age. The Chinese copied us. Remember, China went through its industrial age in the 20th century under Mao Zedong. But what about the Africans and the Arabs? They say they have a lot of resources. Africa has resources. The Arabs have the oil, right? Why don't they build their own industry? You know, instead of sending their people to our countries begging for uh, for welfare, why don't they just build their own industry? Why haven't Why haven't Central Africans done their own industrial age yet? They have access to the internet. They can read on exactly how we did it. They can learn from the Chinese how the Chinese did it, but they're not doing it, and that's weird. Why don't the Africans start their own industrial revolution and produce their own wealth? Because maybe they'll have to work for it and they don't like that? Well, not our problem. We did the work. The white people did the work during the industrial age. But like I said, our race has had enough of this. We've had enough of being the slaves of the factories and, uh, and the offices. And perhaps it is also good for us, right, that we decouple from this way of life, you know? And it matters when I go to the World Trade Organization conference negotiating on the UK's behalf and some of my counterparts, probably in Africa, right, spend the entire time in meetings talking about colonialism, blame the West for their economic difficulties, for the e difficulties of the third world, and make demands that would make all of us, not just in this country, but around the world, poorer, right? Because simply giving Africans and Arabs wealth for colonialism or Indians wealth for colonialism, meaning to give the productive output of the West to them without them actually becoming more productive, and also disincentivizing work in the West, because why would we work to produce wealth for others? We already did that during the industrial age. We produced wealth for the whole world. We are done producing wealth for other people. We're not going to do this anymore. Western white people need to get this through to their heads. We don't need to be so economically active that 90% of what we make flows into the outside world and into the pockets of the billionaires. But what if we just produce what we need, right? And taking into account, we will have larger families again. So we do want economic growth, but it will be different we will reset our we have a, a concept of the great reset from the world economic forum right klaus schwab we're going to do a different kind of reset that we'll call the great reboot the great reboot is we will restart our peoples and we make our peoples the center of our economic life again rather than the other way around right now the economy is the center of the people's lives no no, no. we're going to make the people the center of the economy right we're going to change things around again and that's just very necessary 
I'm not going to read the rest of the article, but you get the point. Uh, I suppose you can read it. The title was uh, Kemi Badenoch, UK's Wealth Isn't From White Privilege and Colonialism, uh, published in April 18th, 2024. Uh, yeah, like I said, she's a puppet working for our Western elites, but good that the Western elites at least understand what's going on here because I was, I was getting really, uh, you know, doubtful about this, whether, our, whether we even have Western elites at all who even understand an iota about what's going on, but apparently they do. They should just be more outspoken about it. So, you know, or, or, or give me money and make me elite and then I'll do it. You know, I'll be more outspoken, <laughs> you know, but thank you for watching.